things we weren't as optimistic, weren't as energized, and you know, you miss a few third downs, you miss that fourth down, that was critical. I think from that point it was a little bit more difficult than it should be. So that's that's a test we didn't pass. Uh, and that's my responsibility to make team make sure a team is resilient and can overcome those circumstances. But to look at the long picture, we're three of fourteen on third downs, one of two on fourth down, they are eleven of seventeen. Uh, facts are uh, that when you play an option offense, you've got to win the possession game. It's going to be opportunistic. We did some good things defensively and gave them some tough down and distances, and then we just had to stop the wheel route or a couple other things very well yet. And then on offense, we just misfired a good bit on uh, third down opportunities. And our running game was outstanding at times, and then it was just okay. So uh, it's hard to win an ACC football game without some form of consistency. So we're going to look at uh, everybody and everything we do. It. And uh, we had something similar to this this circumstance a year ago on the West Coast. The difference is we don't have to fly back across the country to, to look at it and regather. We've got an opportunity to put, put ourselves to work, and we'll do that. This is still, and I told them this, this is still the same team. Felt better about themselves all summer, each position. How hard they worked, how focused they were, they knew they were better, and they still are. So you have to redefine yourself, and that's kind of where we are right now. We're certainly, uh, I'm not deterred uh, with the loss. You know, we're all frustrated to some degree, but frustration won't last. Deterred is just a different thing. We are, we are focused on moving forward, and we will, uh, we will bounce back from this. So with that, I'll take your questions. The offense consistency. tough circumstance. You know, you went around the room talking about every position. I said, well, you know, right now it's pretty tough as quarterback, obviously, because we're, we're, you know, Brandis has it all thrown on his shoulders. You had Anthony and Thomas announcing you know, Brandon, and then it's Parker, and so, you know, I'm sure he feels somewhat the way of the world, but we'll make sure he's okay. And uh, I'm glad he's on our football team. He, he, could, he could be a fine quarterback, and he is a fierce competitor. David, the first possession of the second half kind of encapsulates Seven and a half minutes, third and two, third and two. He just couldn't get him off the field. Well, he yeah. had some down the distances, you know, during that drive to uh, capitalize on, and that's what they have to do. Their execution was good, and ours wasn't good enough. And when you get into that, it's back and forth and back and forth, and um, they did what they had to do, and then they scored, and we get it back, you know, over half of the quarter gone. So, uh, you know, any any team that can do that. I think the first five minutes of the third quarter established a lot of games, particularly if you had a lead going into it. And, and, and they did it well. They just out-executed us at that point. But we were fighting and scratch. That's probably the way our team came out, fought through that drive. Uh, we just didn't get the stop. It could have been at any one time. It just didn't happen. What made your run and attack so good on that first corner drive? And then what happened after that? Well, it's until I watched the tape, I don't know. That's what I referred to about inconsistency. We had other good runs after that. It just was too inconsistent. Coach, I, I know you're not a complainer, but any remarks about the cut blocking? Well, they can do that. I mean, that's what they do. Um, and uh, 
particularly on the perimeter, and you know, it's you know, there's a lot of movement out there, and uh, player safety is such a big issue. And blocking below the waist in high school is gone. Um, there's a lot of talk about it in the NFL right now. So I'll let the, the rules makers worry about that. But right now, every rule that, that really has been a major change in the game has been on the from, from the uh, emphasis of player safety. So we'll see where it heads. I don't think we lost anybody today. So. My question is, so many people complain about the cut blocking when a Georgia Tech or Navy does it. Why doesn't everybody do it since it's limited? Um, well, it's the timing of the offense. I mean, it's it's that's the whole beauty of a, of a wishbone attack. You know, when the ball gets pitched to the corner, the ball's at a position where you can cut. Guy doesn't have time to get back up. It's relation to where the ball is. Um, unless you're in that kind of offense, we throw a bubble, per se, out. The other part of it is you got to also understand, for whatever reason, it's complicated. If you're in a what they call a box, if you're then you're a non-restricted player. Okay, non-restricted players can block below the waist, even going back in on linebackers. If you're a restricted player like we are, spread out, those guys can't go back towards the ball and cut anybody, even in the secondary. So the rules, I mean, it's it's complex and ridiculous. The rules so hard to understand the official can't officiate it, in my opinion. That's why I'm a proponent to just take it out of the game. You know, I mean, it's just, it's easier to officiate and safer for the kids. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of the reason. I know it's hard to kind of completely understand that, but it's, it just wouldn't, it's not, it's not what we do timing-wise. Going back to uh, third downs and playing better on third downs, Well, it's everything you do. Uh, you certainly, you've got to get, it starts with, you know, you've got to get your protection right, and you've got to understand protection circumstance, you've got to move in the pocket, you've got to see, you've got to be in great position to deliver an active ball, and you've got to make really good early reads. And uh, so, you know, it's all of those things, and it happens, and, you know, really, for a quarterback, about three seconds. So experience is a great teacher. Some people, uh, it's easy. Why some people transition on to being great, you know, NFL players or whatever. And I think the more you do it, uh, the better you, you get at it. And, um, and we'll see. I hadn't talked to Brandon about what he thought he was seeing or not seeing, but it was just one of those really tough days, and I felt for him. I wanted to help him, you know, somehow, some way, and so did Coach Roper. But it just, it was a tough day in that regard. How good a test do you feel uh, against? you saw, you know, all of us could, you could see easily, even late in the game, our defense was tied. You know, just held you know, the ends and there were tackles and we rotated some people. And there's going to be some good things come out of it. We're going to play another offense like that in Navy. Um, you know, and uh, it's a test. And those kids, you know, they're, 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 they're pretty worn out down there. And, uh, you know, it's, it is an interesting, anybody, including myself, sometimes you look at it and say, well, why don't we all run it? That's kind of what you know, you're, you're asking. And there's a lot of philosophical questions involved in that. Number one, it's got to be what you do. You got to develop. You don't look at somebody's tape and say, I'll run that. Just start running. It's not plays. It's techniques and teaching and coaching points. And you know, you, you better teach what you very know to the nth degree. So you mentioned the fourth and one as being a critical play. Not like, oh, well, listen, if I like putting the field goal. Conversations with the staff before the game about that, and I still believe that when it's in, when you're in that area, you're in, it's actually inside the fourth and one. Um, you know, you can start second guess. Well, we should have snuck it, or we should have done this, should have done that. Well, if we get it successfully executed, we make the first down. They they just whipped us at the line of scrimmage. Coach, I noticed uh, Van Lee ran up to you to say a few words to you after the game, and. Your thoughts on him? I know you've seen him. Oh, I just, I just told him congratulations, and I said I think you really played well. He said thanks, and I said good luck the rest of the way. Go 
really as simple as that. Brad executed well. He was a good player when he was here, and he's going to continue to be a good player. And, um, you know, I'm happy for him. He's a nice young man. Well, look at the stat sheet. You see that Kelby had 17 tackles. How? How critical or important is that that you know, he kind of passed that test against that defense? Well, that was big. You know, that was his first knee injury. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's huge in that regard. Uh, and I knew Kelly would have a good day. I mean, I knew. I was, I was glad he was on that field. Because it could have been tough without him. And uh, he, he stepped up and did some tremendous things. He's, he's a really, really, really fine football player. He decided not to play part of uh, was that a decision going into New York? Or playing no, the we had or? Parker ready if we needed him. I wasn't going to situationally play him in a game where we only were going to have maybe nine or ten possessions. The game kind of ended up a little different, but because you know, we had so many short possessions. But uh, we, we, uh, we're we not going to be afraid to play. I mean, we're ready to move forward with Parker. And uh, we'll get a, a week further down the road this week in practice, getting all the number two reps also. Will Monday had He was hitting hitting tail draggers, you know, and I don't know why he wasn't turning it over. And uh, I didn't ask him, but uh, sometimes, you know, it's like I don't know how you would compare it. Maybe it's to golf, but sometimes it seems to drop. It drops a little bit off, you know. And, and I, that's what I thought. I thought it was a bunch of nose up pots. It's atypical for him. His average got bailed out by two non-field punts. Delay got the majority of the carries. Was that just a matter of him having the hot hand, or do you see yeah, that going forward? Yeah, I mean, he's just—he's uh, had that kind of week, you know. And that's—that's that's tough sometimes on the other backs. Tough, you know. It, it, it's kind of a tough call sometimes. I don't think I saw Delay have a bad run the entire day. What are the keys for this team to bounce back next week against the Well, I mean, execution offensively. not always easy. This team's competitive and loves winning and so you know it's a combination of things but you know, we, we just have to take three phases and play very good, solid, clean football in all three phases and when we do that we have enough football players to win. You know we took care of the ball you know, pretty well but we got to have we don't need penalties, we need to take care of the football, we need to try to eliminate as many explosive plays defensively hard, solid football. We can win a lot of football games with that kind of group, with the people we have now. And if you don't, you see, see some of the results of what we have. Part of clean is execution. You, you can't you know, go three for, for 14. And that, that, particularly in a game, that was the second thing I told. The first thing I said, we've got to maintain the aggressiveness, which is hard to do, particularly defensively against that offense. You're reacting. The second thing is we have to be the best team in all three phases on third and fourth down. Then their punter turned and flipped the field on us one time. How big a play was that in fourth down? So if they won the third and fourth down matchup, and that was that, that, besides just emotion, I thought that was the 